Production. Recorded live. Everybody give me applause. I did it right this week. (laughs) Okay, so Doug, did you just want to answer questions this week, or did you want to go over a couple things first? I think we'll start with answering questions, um, and we'll see what happens from there. All right, everybody knows star eight, and that'll put your hand up so I can unmute one person at a time to ask questions. Okay, we have one here. Okay. Oh, it's showing it's Connecticut. Go ahead. Hi, this is Bernice. Um, I un- I know a little bit about Accepted for Value. I've never done it, and I understood that this was going to be a call that teaches us how to do that. Yes, or answer questions concerning it, yes. Oh, all right. Well, I'm looking so, forward to the explanation of what to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on debts, which are basically uh, anything that you've been given credit for, like credit cards, uh, mortgages, Uh, car loans, collection letters, bills from hospitals, student loans. These are all kinds of debts because somebody's giving you type of credit. And I consider those utilities as well because they're kind of a quasi-government creation. And whenever the government demands you pay something, they have to have a method for you to pay. So the Accepted for Value works on those things as well as court documents. And what you basically do is you write on the statement, accepted for value, exempt from levy, then you sign your name and date it, put your exemption ID number, which is your social security number, uh, without dashes, deposit to the treasury, and charge to your all capital name and your social security number with dashes. If you have a voucher, um, if it's an uh, IRS related voucher. You can just put on their money order, and that's all you need to do. You can put uh, accepted a warehouse receipt is payment in full at the bottom or something of that nature, but it's not necessary. Um, but but marking that little voucher that they send into you is is important <clears throat> to say this is a money order or money order, and um, then you endorse the back of it. If it's a non IRS related issues such as a hospital bill or something of that nature and I'll take their voucher or their payment coupon or their stub or whatever you want to call it and put on their money order um, pay to the United States Treasury then you spell out the amount of money and then you write in numerals the the amount of money just like you would on a check buy colon sign your name Authorized representative, social security number without dashes, and then endorse the back of that. If there is no voucher, then you find a page uh, that has the amount of money that they're requesting, and then you take that and then do the accepted for value, turn it into a money order. You just treat the whole thing as if it's a voucher. Uh, and then you endorse the back. Did I make that clear? Um, yeah, I wrote really fast. I, I don't know if I quite got it all. Is there is there any pictorial of this? Because if I, I did this once. I did this with IRS, and I didn't quite know how to enforce it because I got back letters saying, you know, that if I file any more frivolous, <laughs> any more frivolous papers. Um, that I'll be fined five thousand dollars each time, and I quite didn't know or have any guidance on what to do, so I didn't do anything, you know, further with that. Um, okay, your first part of your question was what? Um, if there's any kind of pictorial, because I remember oh, pictorial. Yeah, you can get a, a, cop, a copy of this from hjrbonds.com. They send them out free. There's no obligations. They don't put any advertisements in there. You just log on to the website under the Contact Us tab. and there's, I, did, uh, I, I did it through them. That's who I did it with a number of years back, and I just Okay. So, well, then you might need a, an updated sample. Um, 
I don't know if it's changed over the years, but you could ask for an updated sample. And um, when you, do you remember where you sent that accepted for value? Um, I think I sent it to the um, – I did a bond also. I, I did both. And I sent uh -huh. it to um, the U.S. Treasury. I forgot the name of the guy that was in office. And if I heard it, I'd recognize it. Also? I, yeah, I no. sent it to them. Okay, well, yeah. Well, I don't send them to the Treasury Department. And I don't send them back to the office from which they originate. I send them to either the Ogden address the Covington address, or the address in D.C. Those are the only three that I'm aware of currently that know how to handle accepted for values. If you get a frivolous letter, then it's probably because you've got somebody who doesn't know what they're doing with them and thought that it was frivolous. Not that it was, not that you did anything wrong. You just sent it to the wrong guy. Well, you sent I it to a... Pardon? Yeah, I, I understand that. I actually had conversations with them to advise them to research what to do with this. <laughs> but it didn't do me any <laughs> Yeah, they, they're they not really good about stuff like that unless they already know what to do with them. Um, but if you send them to the, one of the three addresses, they pretty much know what to do with them. Occasionally you might get somebody who doesn't, like they hire somebody new or something and they haven't been – uh, told the secrets that they're not supposed to, they're supposed to take with their to their grave. So it's just um, a matter of going to the right place. And that's why I often tell people, if one place doesn't work and you know you did it right, send it to the other address. You know, when the next month comes along, you get a new one, send it to the other address. That way you're not dealing with the same bozo because you don't know if they hired somebody new and they said, okay, you take all the people who have come in the last week or maybe whose last names start with, you know, T or something, and then they take all these things and they come across and accept it for value and say, I don't know what to do with this. It must be frivolous. So they go over and do their job or what they think is their job and send you out a frivolous letter. Oh, okay. To, okay. Yeah. With what I did a couple of years back, I can't take that and send it. Uh, send a copy again. To, uh, there's, a, there's two things here with my situation. One, I settled on a significant amount of the, the tax balance because it, it's a long story. I settled on, on most of it. I still have, I don't know, maybe 10000 left. Um, so is there anything I can do to recover my settlement funds or, or that's gone? I honestly don't know. Uh, I have heard some people when they've done this process uh, correctly, they have received money that has been taken from them, that has been garnished, or something along those lines, and sometimes uh, they just get left alone. A few people get an occasional letter that says thank you, but I wouldn't expect that from them. So it's, it's really hard to say whether or not you're going to get your money back. But the most important thing is to stop them bleeding you dry now. And, right. yeah, you can... And you can use an old one. You can use an old copy of one. Um, you're talking, I remember here. You're talking yep. about an old copy of what? Uh, a copy of your previous tax bill. You said you had one. Um, yeah. Well, I have the part that I settled on. I, I'm, I'm sure I have old copies of this. Yeah. Just take those old copies and do an accepted for value on it and send it to them. Okay, because I had also done a bond, and that, that's what I got the frivolous letters from. Yeah. I, I The bond should have gone through, and I don't know what you do to enforce that either. I don't even know what you would do to enforce the acceptor for value. It's just that I wanted to find a way that I didn't have to enforce something that they would know what to do, and so far they've been pretty good. I think I've only gotten one bill that has, come back to me, and that may be because I waited too long and it missed the cycle for them closing out the account or something, uh, but I just took that and accepted for value and put it in an envelope and sent it to them, and I haven't heard back from them since. Wow, that's great. And you've done it with the utilities also? I don't have any utilities where I am right now. It's all kind of inclusive in the rent, but I don't see why it wouldn't, because it is a government requirement. If it's a government requirement, then it's a tax. 
Okay, so if I, look, if I look on the HDR bonds, because I, I, it's been a long time since I did this, I'll be able to see examples, because I remember I had to do it in red ink, and it had to be across it from left side up to the right side. Is that what you're talking about also, that yeah. that would apply? Yeah. Uh, basically, okay. that sounds like it uh, at a 45-degree angle. Um, yeah. Okay, I mean, I did, like I said, I did it a number of years back, so I'll refresh myself on that. Thank you. Okay, yes. Okay. Free man creditor, you're next. Hi, Doug. I've got a couple quick questions. One is you say to on the A for V to sign it and date it, but isn't the A for V stamp? Have a date on it already? No, well, it, not necessarily. Um, well, some people use their birth date. I've heard that uh, going around out there, and I don't use that. Or they use some other date that they have that means something to them, and I don't see a problem with using that. From the sounds of it, it worked okay, but no, mine are done on the computer. Because usually okay. I have, a, I do a lot of them. Do you uh, put the, the, on the stamp? Do you put the date on the stamp, or do you actually write the date in in blue? Well, I've done it both ways. Okay. Um, I, and usually, if I do the date, I'll put it in red with everything else. But there have been times when I've gotten busy and didn't switch pens and put it in blue. And I don't think the date matters one way or the other. In fact, I recently heard somebody says that they do their accepted in, for value all in red, and they haven't had any problems. Sign it and everything. And I okay. sent a couple as experiments all in blue, and they took those. Okay. All right, now I saw your information on uh, Remedy by Method on the site, and you show where you have the uh, money order and the signature there, but you do not have a date with the signature. You say use it like a check, but there is no date on the money order part. Is that something that uh, is any critical information, or it does it not matter? Um, hmm. It must not matter. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I forget to put that on there. I, I figure if there's one date on there already that I sign, that that's close enough. Uh, I don't know that for sure. I may have just been lucky so far. I think it's a good idea to put a date on there. You know, sign it, then put a date behind that. On the money uh, order. Yeah, but I don't okay. think that is. But apparently, it's not absolutely necessary. Okay. And then, just on the back of the money order, just the signatures required. Nothing paid to the order of, or anything like that. Just a straight signature is all that matters. Yeah, that's how I do it. I know I have seen, and I think even HJR Bonds has a, a sample with something written on the back of it, pay to the order of the IRS or something, uh, which is fine. And if you are sending it to a utility or something, you can change the IRS name out to uh, the name of the company or, or utility. I prefer just to sign it, make it easy for on myself, okay. because then I, since I do everything through the computer or the vast majority of it, I have to change my type, and I don't always do that. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. North Indiana, you're up next. Hey, Doug? Yes? <clears throat> I was on last night's call when you were talking, um, I, and I didn't get your last name. Is it possible I could have that? Yeah, Douglas Riddle, R-I-D-D-L-E. You're not a government yeah, like, agent, are you? Oh, hell, hell no. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, I'm just a guy that's got into mortgage problems and credit cards from business that I I have no more. Um, I've been in business since I graduated high school, and um, I'm just trying to look for a way out. So if I go to HJR Bonds, then this website here will be all pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, for for what? For receiving a sample copy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, 
No, because they don't really go into what you need to do for for a sample. But you just go to their website under the contact us, uh, contact either Dan or Travis, and um, I think it's you. There's also another drop down that I think you just put other down there, and in the box you just type in there. I heard about that you have accepted for value samples. May I please have one? And they'll send it to you. Okay. Thanks. Well, Doug, we posted what you sent out last week, which had the examples for the IRS, and I'm assuming that uh, for other bills would be much similar, except instead of pay to the Treasury, it's going to be to whatever company. Am I correct? No. I Everything is deposited to the Treasury or paid to the Treasury. If you're doing the money order, it's paid to the Treasury, U.S. Treasury. And if you're doing uh, the accepted for value, it's deposit to U.S. Treasury. All of them. doesn't matter whether it's a hospital bill or an IRS tax or some kind of loan or something. It all goes to the U.S. Treasury. All right, maybe we that's could, how I've been doing it so far. Maybe we could get you to draw us up an example, and I'll get that posted so everybody can see. All right, this next one. Ooh, A-L-Y-S-M-I-K. Hello, Doug. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a school loan of about $9,000 that uh, the first payment is due this month. Mm -hmm. So how would, how would you suggest doing that? And are, are we sending these then to the IRS, or are we sending these to the Treasury, or am I sending this, you know, where would I be sending this to? They all go to the IRS, Okay. either Ogden, Covington, or the address in D.C. Okay. Um. You probably have monthly expenses or monthly payments on that student loan. Correct. Then I would pay minimum payments while I do the accepted for value. Unless you don't really care uh, what they might do, because student loans, they tend to be, um, you know, so-so on those that they want them paid, yes, but they go through a long, drawn-out process before they actually go after anybody because that's what guaranteed student loans are. But if you want to stay in honor, if you want to stay uh, you know, somewhat current, if you want to make yourself look good, I don't, I don't know, they might do this, something to uh, credit re your credit report if you don't do it. So it's best just to pay them minimum amount that you can mm -hmm. that, that keeps them happy and at bay and then do the accepted for value. Okay. And I would uh, would I do the how would I do the accepted for value then for the whole amount? Is, is it not going to be on the statement? You know, I don't have the statement in front of me. I should have. Sorry. Well, usually the statements will have the full amount and then what you're supposed to pay for that month. And when you do the money order, you just write it out for the full amount. If you don't have the full amount on there, but you know what it is, then go, go ahead and put the full amount on there. If you're not sure what the full amount is, there are some things that I don't know what the amount is, and I'll just give them a blank money order and let them figure it out. Okay. And as far as money order, are you saying using a 1040Z and then putting money order at the top of it or something? I don't use 1040Bs. I don't use Form 56. And anymore, I don't even send them a cover letter because would you send them a cover letter if you wrote them a check or sent them a postal money order? No, they know what. To, yeah, they know what to do with these things. So um, I, I don't even send them that much. <laughs> On a rare occasion, I might send them a cover letter if it's if it's semi important or something. Um, I do send them a form fifty or ten forty B on bond paper only to separate the various piles. Because sometimes I'll have, like when I first got started, I had um, six or seven different hospital organizations billing me w that had, uh, you know, four or five pages each. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of pages. And since I put them all together and sent them in, uh, I wanted to find some way to separate one pile from another. And I thought, okay, well, I'll put a, a bond paper in there because it's thick, it's noticeable, you can feel it. And then I thought, well, why not just throw it on a 1040B for, for kicks? It's not that much extra. It doesn't matter if it's done right. I I try to do it for the same year that it, the bills are due and everything. 
But in reality, it's not necessary. I send them a lot of stuff without them, and they've been taken care of. I just use them as separators. So then how do you how do you use this money order? Do you write money order on the coupon, or how do you do that? Yes. I yes. see. Coupon, voucher, uh, bill stub, whatever it is you happen to have, yeah, I put money order on it. Okay. Okay, so uh, in the sample from HDR Bonds, it probably shows something similar then, correct? Yes. The, their, their sample will have an accepted for value on the statement, the upper half, and then they'll have uh, a money order on the voucher, which is the lower half. Uh -huh. um, and you just basically follow that pattern. If there's no voucher, then you treat the whole thing as a voucher and you put your mo accepted for value and your money order on the same things. Okay. And and you you send the whole thing together. You don't take the coupon apart or anything like that. You can take it apart if you want. I uh -huh. I did that a couple of times, and I thought, well, they took these others without me doing it. And the the understanding was that if you separate it yourself, it goes a little bit quicker because they don't have to stop and cut it and do all those other things. And I thought, well, I'm not really in a hurry for any of this stuff. So what if it takes a couple of days or a week longer? Mm -hmm. As long as it gets taken care of, that's fine. So I'm lazy. Uh, but if you feel like you need to do it, then by all means do it. But if you don't have a voucher or a coupon or a bill stub or something like that, don't start cutting the paper. You know, it's it's all the voucher, so it all goes. So then take the whole thing, put it in a separate envelope, and do your A for V on the on the larger part, and then send it into Ogden or, or the other address, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Connecticut, you're next. Oh, this is Bernice again, and I'm trying to remember what my question was. <laughs> It has something to do with accepted for value. <laughs> <laughs> Can you use um, certified copy or just uh, copy? I didn't quite hear that. Did you say, can you use a certified copy or or what? I, don't know. I, think, we lost, I think we lost her. Still there? Yeah, um, I was muted. So. Oh. Um, can you use a copy of the bill or just the original bill to do AFB on it? I do uh, the original bills, but I don't see why you can't use a copy of the bill. Um, I heard uh, Winston Shrout one time say that uh, because somebody was asking him during one of his uh, video conferences that you can get on CDs, uh, what they would do in those kind of situations. And he just said, well, just make a copy of it. He says, what if you don't have one? He says, then write it out on a piece of paper. So it doesn't mm -hmm. sound like you actually need the original. You just need something to write on and, and inform them. you got to make sure the account number's on there and everything else if you don't have a copy of it. But that's what they're looking for. They're looking for account numbers. They're looking for the businesses that they need to contact and as long as they have that information, that shouldn't be a real problem. <clears throat> How about for court documents? With court documents, I do handle a little bit differently in as much as I'll accept for value both sides because I've heard it said that uh, court documents, the one side's criminal one, and the other side's civil, and you want to make sure that you take care of both criminal and civil. So I would do both sides on a court document um, but essentially it's the same thing. You go through, I do all the papers. Now, I've heard some people say they'll just do one page and it's been working fine. I just haven't gotten up to that comfort level yet. Um, but uh, you need at least one of those pages and do both sides and then find the one that's asking you for money. Turn it into a money order and send it in either to the court or to the um, IRS. So, um, so for court documents, even that certified document is fine. Fifty-five documents. I certified think this might be one that. I think this might be one that I would test see if they would take just one. 
Because uh, that seems I mean, like a, a by copy or just original or just a copy, plain copy, certified copy of the court documents. You could do it either way. It could be sort of. Um, I don't see any need for certified copies. You can do just either copies or you can just um, send in the originals. It kind of all depends on what you want to keep. Because in, in one sense, you want to make copies just in case they lose it. You know, the mailman loses something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <clears throat> things happen. You know, they might have a big stack of papers and somebody trips and, and knocks something over and your papers wind up in the trash or something. Um, but ultimately, I think you want to keep a copy just for yourself, even if it's an electronic copy that you can later print out if you need to. Yeah, because it's, it's so expensive to get certified copies of the court documents. Yeah, I don't see you needing any certified. I did hear one guy say that he went and got uh, nine certified copies of the, his court documents, put accepted for value on all of them. I don't know that he did a money order. And then he sent them to the court, to the prosecutor, I think, and to several other government agencies. And it was taken care of. Hmm. I think he could have done it quicker if he would have just gone through the IRS. I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Connecticut, you're on this time. Okay, I, I remembered my question. Um, mentioned an A for V stamp. Is that something we purchase, or what is that, please? Uh, I don't. I, well, I do have some stamps, and I use the kind that where you you get the letters, and you have to kind of build your own that way in case later on I decide I want to change the the word wordage or verbiage or something that I can do that relatively easily. Um, but for the first most part, I print everything out through the computer. I just um, put it in my uh, program, figure out where it's going to wind up and then just load everything up and print it out that way. So you're doing you're printing it out right on the bill or you're printing out something that you attach to the bill? I print it out on the bill. Oh, so, okay, so that's a little too sophisticated for me. I guess I'll just write it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that too. You can just get a, a, a pen and just write accepted for value on it. I'll do that when I have just like one or two just because it is a lot of work to set it up in the computer. Once it's set up, it goes pretty quick, but it does take time and it does cost more paper than what a lot of people might not want to do. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We have upstate South Carolina. Hello, Carolina? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, on, I've got three or four questions. On credit card bills, do you pay the minimum payment? I would keep paying the minimum payment on credit card bills or any of those bills in which you want to make sure you keep and uh, don't want the account closed. That way, because you don't know how long it's going to take, and if you miss a couple of payments, they may shut off your electricity or your water or your cable or something, and you don't want that. You want to make sure that things are progressing smoothly. Once you get used to the system and the cycle and everything, you might be able to figure out um, how long something's going to take, so you know how much, how many months you're going to have to have. But in the beginning, be prepared for anything. You know, if you're just making your minimum payments, you should be good. Okay, I was talking about credit cards. I wanted to um, go into the heat and electricity bill. If that's really got me bump over, do you send them the bill every single month that you have, and how do you keep it from getting cut off? Because we don't have minimums here. We have to pay the complete payment, whether it's 100 200 or whatever. I don't know because, uh, like I said, I don't have any utilities. It's all included in, the, in my rent. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't know what to tell you on that one. If they're okay. making you pay every month, it sounds more like it's, they're using it as a purchase than they are as a, a credit or a debt. So I'm, 
it may not be that you can do that. You can still try it and just take a bill and, and do it and see what happens. Um, but you're going to have to keep making your payments, otherwise they're going to it, – it could take the IRS up to 60 days um, to do this. Sometimes they take longer. Sometimes mm-hmm. they take less. Okay, when when you send in a bill to them and it and they do pay it, how do you know they paid it? You don't? Technically I don't. Um they be, they don't tell me. All I know is that I quit being billed. The phone's quit ringing saying, "Are you going to pay this month?" And I tell them, "No, I'm still unemployed. I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to do anything." So they quit um sending me uh, bills. They quit calling me on the phone. Uh, nothing's going to the collection agency. Nothing's showing up on my credit report. Sounds like the bill's paid to me. Okay. For lawyers that have bugged you, and that it's really slowed down to almost nothing, but I've got judgments, I've got liens, I've got levies, you name it, I've got it against me, but for lawyers that are bugging you, now they just send you like just a standard, they're the collection agency, whatever, whatever, but they don't have an amount on the letter anymore. How do you go about finding out how much that is? Well, you could call them up and, and say, I, I'm really interested in paying this off. How much do I owe you? Okay. And see what, and see what they tell you. And then you do the acceptable for value, make out your money over for that amount. But if for some reason you can't find out the amount, uh, just do an accepted for value and leave the money order blank. Sign it, date it, do everything that you need to do to it, endorse the back of it, and then send that off. Well, they, they're not sending me anything as far as it having a money order or you owe such and such. That's not on the letters anymore. No, but they, they're sending you something. Just, right. accept that, just accept that for value, put a money okay. order on it, leave it blank. Okay. okay. Leave, leave the amount blank. Sign it, date it, do everything else. Endorse the back. And if there's something written on the back, do an accepted for value on that as well. If there's something written on the back, that's something I forgot to mention. If there's something written on the back, I do an accepted for value. Okay. Also, in court cases, I will make sure I read the court case to make sure I'm not accepting to go to jail as value, I don't want to do that. So, you know, kind of keep your eyes open for those kind of things. But uh, credit cards, um, yeah, just make your minimum payment and then do the accepted for value and turn it into a money order and send that into them. Now, you said something really important there. If they pay off, say you've got $1,000 on it, and you send it in to them, to the IRS, and they pay that off, can you were you still implying that you can keep the card and use it? Depends on how you um do it. If you pay the full amount off, the credit card companies will often see that as you closing out your account mm-hmm. and if it's, com- if it's completely paid off, you don't want to do that. So you want to short them. You want to pay them, you know, if you have $1,000, you want to pay them 900. So that way you still have uh room for minimum payments and that there will be an amount still left open afterwards. And that way you can start getting an idea of how long it's going to take for uh, them to settle the account or settle that amount and can make your plans around that. Wow. So, yeah, you do need to be careful when you're doing credit cards because you don't want – that is if you want to keep them open. If you don't want to keep them open, then it doesn't really matter. But if you do want to keep them and you want to use them, that's the way to go. And now, could, sorry, go ahead. Uh, and if and once you get this down and everything, then you can use those to pay off your utilities if they don't take care of them, and then you can discharge them through your credit card account. Oh, wow. Wow, that's awesome. Is there any way we could get the addresses for Ogden, Covington, and D.C.? Sure. You can post them on the Yahoo group again a little bit later, Doug, unless you want to go over them. Oh, um, would that work for you Is if they're posted on the Yahoo group? Yeah, I just need the address for the Yahoo group. 
you're not a member of uh, Yahoo Redemption by Method. No, uh uh-uh. uh. My girlfriend's oh. the one who told me about this call. Oh, okay, well, in that case, maybe I should just go over the addresses. Uh, this is being recorded, so I, I don't necessarily have to go real slow. Um, I, Washington, D.C. address. IRS Technical Support Division, care of Treasury UCC Contract Trust, Internal Revenue Service, 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20220. The Ogden address, Internal Revenue Service, stop 4440, Post Office Box 9036. Ogden, Utah, 84201. And the Covington address, uh, Internal Revenue Service, Criminal Investigation Division, Box 192, Covington, Kentucky, 41012. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Mr. Quester, out of PA, you're up next. Hello? Hello? Hey, Doug? Yes. Hi, buddy. Hey, good Hi. call. Appreciate the Thank information. You. Hey, it's Larry here in PA. Uh, I'm the executor of my dad's estate trying to settle the estate, so the things that have to do with him, uh, should they come out of my account or his account? Well, it doesn't sound like he can sign. No, but I'm the executor, so I, I could sign. I can write his name. Oh, you could sign in his his behalf. Yeah. I I don't know. Um, you could probably do it either way, mm-hmm. to be honest. I don't see any reason why you couldn't do it with his or with yours. Okay, I'm just wondering. Or you a, know, if you if in doubt, you can put both on there. True. Okay. There's just something a little different. I thought I'd throw out there just. Somebody well, yeah, I I hadn't really considered that one before. It's um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I'd probably do an accepted for value on both sides, but basically the same principle. Or just try it. If it doesn't work, do, do it the other side. <laughs> <laughs> There's that too. Yeah. Yeah, that too. It's been that, two years now. Anyway, I tell people to make copies of these things so right. that you know if you do it with your with your dad's um, information and it doesn't work, then you can just print out a copy and. Do it with your own information. Because I, I understand they keep those accounts open for like 10 years after the the death. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I heard it's, it's 10 years, so it's not like they close them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, that's all I got. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. All right, Connecticut, you're up. Hi, I'm back again. Um, I'm... <laughs> I also was invited by a friend of mine, and I'm not familiar with the Yahoo group and how to become a part of that. Uh, What's the Yahoo group um, called Redemption by Method? And I guess you just do a search for it. Once you get to the Yahoo website, then you go to the group section and then look for Redemption by Method. Oh, it's Redemption, not Reduction. It's Redemption. Redemption, yes. I caught that wrong. Okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Southwest Florida. I have a question. Yes. Um, in regards to like, a college tuition, uh, if I'm like wanting to go to an educational facility, uh, can I approach them uh, like beforehand and ask for a uh, a billing statement for like your college education and then A for V that. Is that something you can do before like you start your classes or do you have to wait till after it's all done and after you've got a student loan and all that? You see what I'm saying? Can you A for V at the front or do you have to wait till the it's pretty much done? You, you understand my question? Yes. And from 
what how I understand it, and I really don't know for absolute sure, certainty, but the way I understand it is uh, you have to wait. Uh, you can't do it to begin with because that would be a form of purchase, and form of purchase could get you into trouble. Correct. Yeah, I understand now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yes, I thought of, if I thought about that, I would have answered my own question. All right, I'll uh, get off so someone else can ask a question. I appreciate your time and, and good information, by the way. You're welcome. Boring Eagle 212. Hi, this is Nikki. Hi, Doug. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Nikki? I'm doing great. Um, I really don't have a question. You're covering so much of great stuff, and I'm understanding it more. But um, to my friends out there that don't know how to get on to Redemption by Method, I will be sending you an email when I get back on my computer, and I will um, give you the link so you can all get on uh, Redemption and find out all this awesome information that's being handed to us. And thanks, Doug. Have a great evening. Okay, thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right, we're back to it. He's going to have to tell me how to pronounce this this time, A-L-Y-S-M-I-K. Um, I pronounce that Elizmic. Okay, now I got it. Go ahead. Um, hi, Doug. Hey, you know, uh, about I, maybe about a month ago, I actually uh, saw on the group, and I had downloaded this package. So now I'm looking at this, and I see that on the front on, of the example, you have this is a money order in red, and then at the bottom you also have acceptance of warehouse receipt is paid in full. Is that what you should also write on the bottom of the coupon? You can. It's not absolutely necessary. Okay. I mean, there are there are things you can throw on there if you want to. I haven't seen that it makes any difference one way or the other. Some people said that it, it was quicker. That's what HJR bonds, why they kept on doing things just a little bit different each time, is because somebody reported that it was quicker when they did this, or less explanations or, or something along that line. Um, I haven't seen that it made any difference one way or the other. So if you feel comfortable about that, then use it. Okay. And then the exemption ID and your Social Security, it's, it, you're not using the back number, the private number on, on your card. You're just using your Social Security number with or without dashes. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Cool. And now, I have, I, some people do use the back of the card and get the federal routing number and all that kind of stuff, and it works. So <laughs> if you're used to that or understand that principle, then you can keep on using it. I don't. I use the front of the card. That's how I was kind of taught and trained and everything, and that's how I'll keep on doing it. Okay. Right, thanks. You're welcome. Connecticut, you're on. Hi, this is Bernice again, and I appreciate all this information. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I'm in bankruptcy court in Chapter 13, and I'm also in a foreclosure, and I'm wondering um, if I should present copies of what I sent to validate that, I, that I'm in process of paying off the debt or how I might approach that. Um, say that again. I'm not sure I I'm quite understood. You, you're going to show who, what? I'm, I'm in a Chapter 13 that's probably going to be dismissed December 10th because I haven't followed through with the paperwork. So... And I'm also in foreclosure, so I'm dealing with um, the court that deals with foreclosures. And, you know, I'm sort of, um, I don't have a heck of a lot of time left. I don't know if I have 60 days left. I don't know how much time I have left. So I was wondering if I do this um, the, the for value, if I should present a copy, in addition to sending it to IRS, present a copy to either of those courts, if that would help me at all or, or be not good for me to do? I don't know that it would be good or not good, to be honest, because it all kind of depends on how the, the court responds to it. If they know what they're supposed to be doing with these, then it would be a good thing. If they don't, then all you're doing is opening up another can of worms. Um, you, you could try stalling and, and tell them that you may continue on with the bankruptcy, but that you may have found a way to pay everybody off and make everybody happy, and what you need is a little more time. And so keep it kind of um, in limbo, so to speak. Uh, right. as, far as, as far as your foreclosure goes, 
Yeah, it's that that'd be a tough one because you don't know how long it's going to take before the IRS gets around in, in settling it. And one of the things that's good to belong to the redemption by method group is that they have other methods to use too. I would go ahead and use the accepted for value process on it, but I'd also look at the RPOA, the revocation uh, power of attorney. And let's see, I think there was another one too. And I haven't really studied these methods, but these would be in addition to. Because one of the things you can do that most people aren't aware of is you can fire the trustee. Right. I, the I did some of those papers, but I haven't filed them yet with the court. I'm in the middle of so many different processes. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I understand that because I've been there too where I just had all this paper, you know, drowning in paper, as it were. And it can get really messy. Um, but you just kind of take one thing at a time and, and do that. Um, but, yeah, I'd get that accepted for value in, in the mail as soon as I possibly could. Make sure you do it correctly so don't go right. too quick. But, um, yeah, and then see what you can do about stalling. You might even call up the bank and say, I think I may have found a method in which to settle the account and we won't have to do this. Can you give me another 30 days? Right. I mean, I still do have some time on the foreclosure, but I've stalled this. <laughs> I've tried this out over three years, so I think at this point <laughs> I don't oh. still need any more time. Um, oh, but, okay. my, but my question also is, is there anything written that explains the process that could be presented if I choose to present this in court that, so that they could find easily find the information that validates the process that I'm doing. To validate the accepted for value process? Right. Is is there any place where I could print out something that would explain what I'm doing so that they can see that that it that it's of substance and if they desire to validate it themselves they would know how to do that? Um yes there is. But not in any one location. It's like bits and pieces everywhere. Uh, so you have to explain to them the the United States is in bankruptcy and we're using debt instruments. And I think there's like a 30-page document on the bankruptcy of the United States. Then you can go into um, um, HRJ 192, um, Public Law 7310, Title 31, Section 5118, um, which all basically state that they will discharge debt dollar for dollar. And you can go into the Constitution, says that the Constitution o demands that we use only money. And if we're not, then what are we using? Um, and if they start whining complaints, that you can tell them 14th Amendment says you can't complain about the debt. So you either take it or, or you take it. Um, then I think there's parts in UCC, and I'm not sure of those t those places, but it talks about um, monetary instruments being used. So there are lots of places where this stuff could show va validation, but to collect them all and present it easily is um, not easy. <laughs> um, Maybe there's a way to put out a request if anybody has done that, if they're willing to share the work that they've done. Somebody must that's, have done something like this. That's a good idea. Um, and I don't know who would do that. I, I suppose you can go on the group uh, and start there on, on the various groups, the CIC groups, uh, Commerce in Common, uh, Redemption by Method. Uh, you can maybe write to hjrbonds.com and see if anybody has uh, information or at least codes and title sections that you can look up and determine which ones you want to use. But, you know, there is so much stuff out there. I mean, the Constitution says we have to use gold and silver for our money, and we're not using anything that's re cl remotely close to gold and silver. So if we're not, how are they getting away with it? And if they can use promissory notes, which is what Fe Federal Reserve notes are, then why can't we use notes as well? Right. You know, we're not supposed to be.
be in a in a country where uh there's um a monopoly on anything that includes federal reserve notes that's a good point. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I wish I had better eyes. Indiana, you're up. Yeah, Doug? Yes. Uh, okay, this is Glenn. I heard you, you make a, a statement to somebody that uh, when they had to inquire about how much they owed or something, uh, yes. and uh, and for them to tell them that what they wanted to do was pay get this paid off, Yes. I don't think I don't think you ever use the term paid off. What you should say is you want to sat, get this debt satisfied. Satisfied or settled, you're right. You, uh, that's right. the way you should do it. Right. Never use the term you're going to pay them off. Okay. You're right. Okay. I just wanted to get that cuz you know the, these people are listening and they're and you don't want to get them out there in trouble. But that's right. all I got to say. Okay. Uh, yeah, cuz because I, I did that very thing, is these things that were listed on my credit report, I wrote to the companies and told them, um, I am trying to settle this account. What do I need to do in order for to, me to get a positive rating or for you to um, delete the information off my credit report? What do I need to settle the account? So, yeah, I'm very aware that you shouldn't use the words pay because there is no way to pay. Okay, well, that's that's all I have to say. I okay, just wanted good to point. Get, that out to the, you get that out to people so they don't, they're not going to be writing paid out or paid off or any, any of that. Don't use the word pay in nothing. So, I, okay. Yeah, that's, that's especially true with the IRS. Uh, with the other companies, most of them don't know the difference between Anything. It's a good idea to stay, keep in that practice to satisfy or, or settle the account, discharge or offset, um, you know, anything but pay. You, so you're right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Arizona, you're up. Oh, yes, I was just uh, wondering if it's really important to send it by certified mail um, or just regular mail. I used to send it by certified mail. I don't do that anymore. I, I figure uh, they get it. Um, I'm happy. They're happy. Everybody's happy. So I just drop it in the mail now. You know, it, it's just like it's just like me paying a bill without using any uh, of my checks or going to the post office for money orders or doing any of that other kind of stuff. I just um, fill it out, drop it all in an envelope, and send it to them. Thanks. Now, if if there's something where I'm having difficulty, like maybe they lost something or maybe I have a malevolent um, IRS agent that destroyed some documents because, I don't know, maybe they got fired and decided just to grab a handful of documents and burn them on his way out. But for whatever reason, I'm getting a, another bill, then, especially from the IRS or something. Then that I will send by certified mail, certified mail just because there's a potential problem, and I want to document this a little stronger. Aside from that, or if I'm doing a mortgage, I'd probably send that by certified mail too, just because that's highly important. But if it's just uh, minor stuff, I'd probably just uh, drop it in an envelope and send it off to them. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Connecticut's back. <laughs> Hi, Doug. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. Um, would it be wise or not wise to send it to all three of those IRS locations at the same time? Um, I don't see why you would need to unless you're just trying to make sure it gets taken care of right away. Right, but there wouldn't be anything negative to do with it, to do that, would it? Would there? I, not to my knowledge. If something does negative happen, let me know. <laughs> um, but as far as I know, I don't think there would be. They might have cause to celebrate because they realized it was paid off and they got a money order and they say, um, let's buy some champagne and get drunk. Well, what would happen if they got it from three three different IRS uh, offices and let's say an electric bill and, and they got three payments? What happens then? I mean, you'd be paid forward. 
um, most likely the electric company will be paid off and happy, and the IRS agents would be drunk on champagne. So it, it would create a, a, a pay-it-forward type of situation that would be a problem? Um, not not really that I can see. I, I might be a rare instance where you actually get the money back or show an overpayment, but I wouldn't count on it. I, I really wouldn't. I, I would think that it would be more of a, of a surprise than anything else. Probably an agent who doesn't know what they're doing and knows a little bit of information, sees that it's already paid off and says, oh, well, I'll give her a refund. But I wouldn't expect that. And I don't see any bad repercussions coming from it because what are you going to do, get in trouble for paying it off or settling the account, I should say? Um, I don't think they're going to come after you for something like that. Okay, all right. And what about, what about like, somebody was asking about utilities. I mean, what if every month, when we got, as soon as we got our bill, we sent out um, and accepted for value and left the amount blank? Um, so that That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, you, if, if you know how long it's going to take, it might take you a couple of months to get in the swing of things, but at the first of every month, you do an accepted for value and you have the account number, even if it's the same old um, copied uh, bill that you got, you know, on day one and just sent it in blank, that might be an interesting thing to see how it works out. I Maybe would think that would be fine. Maybe we could just put, this is for November bill, this is for December bill, this is for January bill. So they would have them in advance so that we'd be covered on the 60 days. Possibly, I don't know. Um, I would probably back month them if you're going to do anything. Uh, you know, put on there. This is this was for September. This was for October. You know, that way it's an old debt and not a purchase. Unless we signed it with the date of the month that we wanted to apply to, but we'd be sending yeah, it. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it's like December now, and you were to do one, then you would put down there for October. Oh, I, well, I was talking about forward. In other words, to because because they will sometimes shut service down if you don't if you're two months past due. So I was just trying to see how to get coverage for that. Well, and I'm not saying wait wait till you're two months past due. I'm saying backdate it two months. Right. Be, because the, um, if you do it for a purchase, I don't think they're going to do that. Because right. it's forward. Now, I have heard some someone say that uh, because it's the government and all that other kind of stuff, that you can ask them for uh, a year, year's bill, and then accept that for value. Because they are a quasi-government operation, that they it might work. So you're so you talking could do about that. A, year, a year's bill forward. Yes. Be, because it is a requirement. It, it, it's a it's a real gray area, so I don't really know how to answer that one. I'm just kind of guessing that you know, on the one hand, it's a form of a purchase, and you don't want to do purchases. On the other hand, it's a government requirement, therefore it's a tax, therefore you can uh, accept it for value. Now, can you do it for this month, next month, or last month? I don't know. So okay. you can try. So you can try a variety of things and call them up and say, uh, or do a calculation and figure out how much you're going to spend in the year and do an accepted for value for that entire amount and um, and see what happens. Okay. I mean, that sounds good. The other thing is, um, can you do this for traffic tickets? I don't see why not. It's, it's a government requirement, and they know there's no money, so they have to be willing more so to take care of those kind of debts than anything else. So yeah, okay. I, I I would do it for traffic tickets, parking tickets, or anything involving court. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, Carolina, you're up again. Hello. Go ahead, South Carolina. Oh, hello. I didn't know you were talking to me. 
One thing I've always been told was that if you send everything in a manila envelope, it doesn't have to be the huge one, but as long as it fits into a manila envelope, that they absolutely, by law, have to open that envelope first. It's always put on the top of their sack. So that's the way to get everything um, taken care of where it's right in their um, priority list. And then number two, can you take care of a regular phone bill the same way you would a utility bill? I, I honestly don't know because a uh, phone bill is not required as such okay. by the government. Although a phone line is, I mean, if you can't, it's hard to buy a house without a telephone line on it. So I, I'm not positive on that. Um, I would think that you wouldn't be able to because you have a lot more options with uh, phone companies and internet than you do with uh, electricity or something like that where you're only limited to, to one or two choices. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Larry and PA, you're up. Hey, Doug, it's Larry again. Hi. Hey, um, how about someone else's bill? I don't see why not. As long as you're using your information and your numbers, um, I don't think they care whose exemption account this comes out of. You know, somebody you know they wouldn't have the, you know, the capability of doing all this, you know, but you, you'd like to help them out. You don't want to reach in your pocket, but you don't mind reaching into your trust account and take care of it. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Show them what you're doing. Uh, so while they're biting their fingernails and panicking and about ready to have a coronary, that once they see that it's been taken care of, they go, oh, well, I can do that too. Right, and then teach them how to do it. Yeah. Get them out of the, get them out of the fire, and then and then you know show them how to keep the fire down. <laughs> yeah, you just have to give them a lot of tranquilizers until they yeah, see yeah. it work. <laughs> I hear that one. That's all. Larry, if I, if I send all my bills to you, Larry, you'll take care of them. I guess. <laughs> okay, Doug. I don't know. I mean, I guess you've answered every. Wait well, a minute. Oh, here we go. I almost uh, has my lick. I. Al's out. Say it again for me, please. I had one more question here. Okay. Okay, so on my billing statement here, there's a total payment due of like $111, and then there's amount enclosed. Um, would there be any reason, you know, to, to do this monthly, or should I just, you know, do the whole thing? Because it does show a current balance of, you know, 9800 So would you just put, you know, the 9800 in the amount enclosed and be done with it in one swoop or what? This is the credit card bill? Um, the direct loan, school loan. Oh, it, yeah, I'd put the full amount in. in. In fact, anytime you see a little box and you're turning something into a money order, I would always put the amount in that box as opposed to writing it out within the money order. It just uh, worked. I think it works better that way. Um, but, yeah, I, I would do the full amount. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ben. You're welcome. Because on that um, student loan, it does have the balance uh, or, or the full amount that you owe on it. So there's no reason why you can't just put that number in there instead. It, you could do the same thing if you were if you had a check or a postal money order or, or some other financial instrument that you could throw in there as well. So there's no reason why you can't just uh, do the acceptable for value and do the, your money order for the entire balance. Okay. Now, on, on this coupon part, it says make check or money order payable to U.S. Department of Education. Should I, like, write that across the front as if this was a check or a money order or just just leave it, you know, with money order at the top? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, the, the, one of the reasons why I like putting uh, the U.S. Department of, or U.S. Yeah, US Department of Treasury hmm. is – because they're the ones that are um, designed to discharge these debts dollar for dollar. And and therefore, uh, putting somebody else on there just kind of creates um, kind of a quagmire. Of course, this is all still going to the IRS, but if they can't cash it, then they can't settle the debt. But then on the other hand, if the thing says make it payable to, so I honestly I don't know. This might be one of those times where on the back of the on when I endorse it, I put on um, pay to the D 
Department of School Loans or something of that nature and then endorse it there so I that see. there's a kind of a continuity of flow. The other thing you can do, I suppose, is put two money orders on there and let the IRS decide which one they want to take care of. You know, they might ignore one and take care of the other. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Is that all of them? Can you hear me, Doug? Oh, I can hear you. You just said something that struck a bell with me. Did you say the only way the IRS can cash the money order is when it's made out to the Department of the Treasury? Um, that's my understanding, yeah, because uh, they are a sub-department of the Department of Treasury, and so they are the accountants and uh, money handlers for the Department of Treasury. So, yeah, uh, that's how I see it. So everything that we do on every money order that we write, it should be written out to the Department of the Treasury. On the accepted for value should be written out to the Department of Treasury, the money orders should be made out to um, uh, payable to the Department of Treasury. Yes. Wow. That's, that's, that's how I do it. Now, what he brought up was an interesting thing where where the voucher says make check or money order payable to and then write that out there. So in that case, what actually might be a better idea is just treat it like the IRS bill where you just put money order on it and um, – fill in the amount, and let it go, and, and, and let the IRS take it from there. You know, this is a money order. Put in the amount, endorse the back, and then send it off to them. That might work just as well. You know, uh, some of these things are just kind of like ideas, and you may have to tweak them a little bit. This is how I would handle it if I were to have gotten one um, it may take some extra tweaking on some of these things I don't have it down to a science yet I'm just thinking of it as to make it make sense to whomever is going to be opening it if they open it up and they see something like a deposit to you know Ford Mortar Company and they go well we're not Ford Mortar Company we can't legitimately cash these and offset the debt, then they just kind of throw them away. So you want to make sure that it makes sense to whom's ever opening it. If it's deposited to U.S. Treasury and made payable to the company, they might be able to do something with that. They might be able to tweak it. I don't know for absolute fact on if they can or they can't. Wow. Did uh, I clear things up or did I make things more confusing? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little muddy right there, but we'll listen to the thing again and get it all straightened out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is John from Michigan. I got a couple of questions for you. Do you have, would you be able to, or do you think if you have regular bills that you paid for with cash out of your pocket, that you could turn that in and get that cash back? Not through this process, no. Okay. Uh, you might be able to use some other process. As far as I know, using cash uh, pretty much eliminates all processes um, because you don't have a real record uh, of what you're spending the money on. You do have uh, the receipt you, from the. You do have the receipt from the uh, store or wherever you use the cash. Yeah, but do you know what to do with it to to get reimbursed? Well, that's what I was asking. If you put them all together, listed, you know, 10 receipts on a sheet of paper with uh, dollar amounts and sent that in and said return or accepted for value, return for value, uh, if they would send you the money back or if you heard of anything like that. I haven't heard of anything like that. It might be kind of uh, fun to play with. I don't know what would happen if you did. I get a collection of your receipts, put it, total up the amount, put a, a 1040B in there, and um, 
I don't know what they would do. They might scratch their heads and, and call their supervisor and say, what do we do with this? I don't know. I I don't see any problems with it. I've seen, if, if you do this process properly, I don't see that uh, even when you do it for something that you're not supposed to do, they just tend to ignore it. You know, like I did Comcast several different times in several different ways to see if they would take it, and they never did. But everything else that I sent in with it was taken care of. They never sent me a frivolous letter because I did it or anything of that nature. So I don't know if I just got a nice person taking care of this or or what. But, you know, Comcast, they never touched, and everything else they did. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me how long you've been doing the process? I started over a year ago. Been I've been at listening. It. Go ahead. I say you've been at it for a year. Over a year, yeah. A year. Okay. Yeah, it was about September of last year, um, maybe July or August, somewhere right around there. And that's well, when I started gathering much. up all my, huh? I say thank you very much for your information. You're welcome. I, it's, I'm finally, I've heard about the process for over a year. I've done, dabbled with the process, but I'm finally talking to somebody that's actually said, I have had the pro, done the process and it works. It works. Mm-hmm. Great. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Connecticut, you're back on. Hi, Bernice again. Um, I, this is sort of a silly question, but I don't know the answer to it. Does the U.S. Treasury actually pay the amount to the vendor or the creditor in cash, or is it done on, on paper? I have no idea. I, I never really asked them or, or anything. And that, um, the only example I have that comes close to answering that would be the guy who had $40,000 worth of back child support that he owed. And he did an accept it for value, sent it in to one of the three addresses of the IRS. And a few weeks later, his wife called up and says, everything's been taken care of. So exactly how, what happened, I don't know. I assume they, they gave her a check, but uh, I don't know. And I don't know where the check would have come from if it would have come from the court, if they would have come from the IRS, or would have come from Treasury. Um, all I know is that she was happy and satisfied, and you don't always get those from next wives. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Doug, somebody on the chat line here wanted me to ask you if you could comment on the manila envelope that uh, was mentioned a few minutes ago? I, I thought it was interesting. I've never heard of using the manila envelope in that respect myself. But again, if everybody, if you've got, you know, a thousand people using manila envelopes, uh, that's great you're on top and will be handled first, but you could be on the bottom of that top pile. So, you know, it's it's good to know if it's actual correct and everything that you're on the upper pile rather than on the lower pile. Because uh, I put a few things in uh, just a regular envelope myself, and had I known that, I might have put it in an, a manila envelope instead. Um, but, you know, again, more and more people are using this process. If we're all using manila, manila envelopes, then we could still end up on the bottom of the top pile. All right. It's 19 after. We have one more question. You let us know when it's time for you to go. Okay. Mr. Larry from PA again. Hey, Doug. Larry again. Hi. When you're uh, when you're taking care of a presentment from the court, and you've got so many days to do it, you're going to accept it for value, and you send it off to the IRS. How do you notify the court so that they see that you've acted upon your or upon their request within the time period that they allotted? You just have to bear and grin it, or you could uh, write to them and say that um, you are doing your best to uh, meet the requirements of the settlement, and you will have it taken care of 
as soon as possible, or something along those lines. You just want to basically stall them. Yeah, but uh, you don't want to let them know what you're doing. Normally, no. I mean, you could do an accept it for value and send it to them, and uh, if they make any whines or complaints about it, you can say, well, if you won't accept this, and I'll accept the fact that you don't want to accept this, then I need more time in which to settle this account, um, but it will be settled very shortly. And then you do the same thing. You just send it to the IRS. Or send it to both of them at the same time. Or you could send it to both of them at the same time. If one doesn't accept it, then... Uh, the, other the, other already, the other one's already in process. Yeah. Or why can't you just tell them that this has already been sent to the IRS for a settlement and you'll be notified shortly? Because what are they going to do? Well, because you don't know how they're going to handle that. They, oh, they may say, okay. why are you sending it to the IRS when we're the ones requesting the payment? What do you What do you think you're doing? And now okay. you're kind of put okay. into a spot okay. where you have to explain it. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's what I wanted to clear up. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. North of Indiana. Buffalo, Indiana. Yes. I got a silly, and that may not pertain to anything. I I, I just it's been running through my head. I watched on uh, Fox News Channel the other night <clears throat> where they interviewed one of the senators, and I can't remember his name. Little, he's a little, little little dude. He's an older gentleman. Saying that they're trying to pass the law, and it looks like it may pass, that the Federal Reserve will be audited. What is that? How is that? Will that change anything that what what you're talking about now? Because you know, you're not, we we all know the Federal Reserve's rotten. So. Um, is that going to change anything with these people trying to do now? As far as I know, it shouldn't uh, affect it. In fact, I don't, I don't see them actually carrying through with it. I think they're just saying something so that the people will be appeased at, at what they're attempting to offer when nothing's going to take place. Because the Federal Reserve is not part of the United States. It's a private, independent company, and I don't think they're even associated with any country at all. And therefore, if if uh, the United States puts pressure on them saying we're going to do an audit, they may say, well, then we're going to take all of our money and, and, and leave. Mm-hmm. And then we get thrown into a bigger crisis before because all the banks will be just shut down right there and then. And the only people who know how to do anything at all will be people like us who are writing bonds or um, doing accepted for values or something along those lines. The rest of everybody else is going to be um, pounding on our doors uh, trying to eat our families. Um, you know, so the Federal Reserve is still in a good position where they can just say, uh, no. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Also, Doug, the only way this process would quit working is if we went back to using money, which I don't see that happening. Yeah, essentially, I, I would agree with that. It's uh, That would be the only way to really stop this process is uh, give us the the type of money that we were supposed to have in the beginning. So, I, and, and technically, I'm not sure that I could ever see this ending, because even if we were to um, go back on the gold and silver standard, we still have bonds. Bonds change; uh, it's just paper instruments, and and they change in value depending upon how much people are willing to spend on them and how much not, and. The bond, those bonds and those um, corporate documents and everything don't increase in, in value or don't create more gold as such. And therefore, it's still all on paper. It's still just imaginary stuff, and it keeps the companies moving. So I'm not even sure that if we went back to gold and silver that this part would ever change unless you got rid of the whole uh, Securities Exchange Commission and everything related to it. Well, it's 6.24 my time. I don't see anybody has any questions here. Star 8, if, question. star 8, if you have a question. Ah, here we go. Central Colorado. Hello. Hello. 
Hi. Um, I uh, apologize. I was in a meeting uh, until just a few minutes ago, and I was trying to find out if there was a way to get a copy of the, the recording, because I know I missed a whole bunch of information. Yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, it, this is being recorded, so there's a way to get it. Okay. Is, is that on Talk Shoe or? Yes, and we'll post that on the Redemption by Method a little later tonight. Okay, awesome. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Texas, you're up next. Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm on here. I'm not sure if I'm... I'm not talking about anything. There's just one question, and I'm not sure. Ms. Gotcha. Okay. Back to central Colorado, then. Okay. Am I muted? Yes. Colorado, go ahead. Well, I, I thought I had a, myself muted. I didn't have anything. Sorry. All right. Sorry. So <laughs> going to Connecticut again. Go ahead, Connecticut. Hi, this is Bernice again. Um, if someone has... Um, has not filed IRS, you know, income taxes. Can they do this and leave it blank so that the IRS can assess um, what is owed? Because sometimes they will do that if you haven't filed for a length of time. Yeah, um, I I hadn't filed since um, about 2099, something like that, and I started doing accepted for value, and I was a little bit concerned about that too. But one of the first things I did was grab all my old um, uh, tax notices and, and demand letters and everything and just started doing a massive accepted for value on all of them and money orders and signing the backs and everything. It was a all-day project and everything and sent the whole package out to the IRS. They took care of it. They didn't uh, blink an eye. They didn't do anything. Oregon Department of Revenue did come by and, and uh, asked me to file for, um, I, for, I guess, this year, or maybe it was last year. And, I, and they said, if you don't file, we'll, we'll do the report for you, and you're going to have to pay whatever we say. And I said, thank you. I accept your offer. Uh, please do, and I will accept for value anything that you give to me, and we'll settle the account as soon as I possibly can. And that was the last I heard of them. So, yeah, you can do this even if you've not filed for a while. If they send you anything that says that you owe anything, accept it for value and send it back to them. Wow. Now, what about um, uh, LLCs and corporations? Can they utilize this too? The corporations can't um, do the accept it for value because they're not flesh and blood. They don't. They can't sign anything. You can sign in their behalf. Uh, you use your own exemption ID information and sign it with your own name. So basically, it would be just like they're taxing you a second time. And you just sign off on it and turn it into a money order, send it back to them. That should work just fine. It's just like you can do the acceptance for value for your friends or your neighbors. Well, you can also do it for your corporations and your LLCs and, and trusts and all those other things, too. Oh, wonderful. That's awesome news. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we got two in Texas. Go ahead, Texas. Um, whichever one's on, open. Texas? Go ahead. Hello, Texas. Are you there? One just hung up. The other one's still there. So I don't know. Hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is Steve in Texas. Uh, can this process be used to uh, discharge like a, a criminal case or probation or that kind of stuff also that you know of? I'm, I'm not absolutely positive because I'm not on probation, but I don't see why not. Uh, it, it's a debt that you're paying 
either through your body or through your financial situation. I don't see any reason why you can't do an accepted for value on whatever papers you have. Um, again, this is a court document, so I would do the front and the back, accept it for value, and yeah, and, and just do a blank money order if you don't know the amount, and send it into either the court or the IRS. Okay, and just like use just like a judgment or whatever the probation order was or whatever applies on that, something like that. Yeah, I, I would do those too. And I'm studying the uh, 1099 OID abandon or 1099 A's mm -hmm. uh, abandonment process, and on court cases and and other difficult accounts that uh, won't let me do an accepted for value or something on them. Um, I have one collection agency that's I don't know what's going on with them. Why why the accepted for values haven't gone through? But I'll just if it doesn't go through this next time, I'll just do an uh, 1099A on them and uh, get rid of the account altogether. All right. um, but I don't see why you can't do that with court cases, too. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you much. You're welcome. Central Colorado, you're up again. Hi. Um, my question is uh, similar to the, the lady that was uh, talking a little bit earlier. Um, I had uh, gone back through and uh, did CTCs, uh, uh, cracking the code on uh, a bunch of stuff. So I know what I'm going to get is a, a bunch of $5,000 frivolous filing fees. Mm -hmm. and, what I, and what I was thinking of doing was going back and actually refiling all of those returns uh, with the um, uh, amount that is actually stated on the W-2s and the 1099s. And uh, and then do an accept for value for that amount plus uh, the frivolous filing fee. Is that a viable plan? That sounds like a great plan. Uh, so so, can I do that incrementally, or should I wait till I get the, you know, incrementally meaning uh, accept for value for the amount of the return, and then wait for the the frivolous filing fees to come at my door, or or well, yeah. You know, yeah, because you don't know when or how long it'll, it'll take. Uh, just do one year at a time. Um, th and that's something else I should have mentioned, too. Even though I, I talked about bundling all these things up, um, I bundled them up within their own years. Um, that was more important when you first get started than now because everything I get now is, is current. Um, but, yeah, you could do that. Do uh, do. 1040Xs or whatever, uh, correct the, all the stuff, and if they ask for money, then you just do an accept it for value. So you can, uh, you can either wait till they they bill you for the amount, or you can try and be creative and somehow uh, prepay them or something. Okay. So my next question is: is for 97 and 98, uh, which was a joint return? Uh, both of those years were joint returns uh, with my wife and I. Um, and on those years, those two years, they have recorded in the uh, county recorder's office uh, liens for on both of those years. When I do the uh, uh, refiling of those those years uh, and send that in, what do I need to do in order to resolve the lien issue? Anything extra, or should they? What I would up? what I would probably do, just off the top of my head, of course, um, is is go to the courthouse and try and get a copy of the liens or at least information on the liens and do an accepted for value on those and then go and take care of the the taxes, the 1040s or whatever, and, and do those. That way that gets, you're, you're kind of taking care of it twice, but with liens and everything, why not? So... Um the ironic part about that is I, I do have that information already from from the uh, county recorder's office. However, uh, the amount that it shows has never, ever changed as a direct result of, of garnishment on wages or pay, uh, installments or whatever the case may be. So should I go ahead and say I will accept you know this amount from the county recorder? Um, that's an interesting thought. Um, here's a rabbit trail for you. Um, Accept that amount that's in the county recorder's office, uh, of which 
um, is going to be a greater amount than what we currently owe as a result of the uh, garnishments. And as a result of that, that uh, disparity in, in amounts, would we get money back from the accepted for value? I don't know that you would get money back from the accepted for value. But one of the things you could do just uh, to find out is um, do the accepted for value for the full amount, even though it's over. And then once you know, and this one I would send in by certified mail. And so once you know that they have accepted it or have received it, then you do an abatement and refund and say that uh, this has been settled and uh, the lien should be removed or abated and I should receive a refund of so much back, so many dollars back, and and then uh, send that into uh, wherever. And those with uh, abatements and refunds, you send those back to the office from which they emerged from, so you can get the right agent or at least the right department or something. Uh, you're not doing accepted for value, so you don't have to, um, you know pretend you're not or something of that nature, you can just send the uh, abatement and refund form to them. Okay. And and are those uh, abatement and uh, refund forms uh, available somewhere from somebody? Oh, yeah, from, from the IRS. I think it's form 843. I'm not oh, positive yeah. on that. Correct. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. Or you can make up your own, but, um, you know, make it easy on them. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are you going to mute me or do I need to mute myself? South Carolina, you're up. Yes. Let me ask another question. Actually, it's three questions. Um, we have a judgment against us for a um, credit card debt. I went to court over it. I wound up walking out of court because of some of the things that were said, and that's what wound up wound us up with the judgment against us. If I just go in and send in the old credit card um, statement, will that take care of that judgment, or do I have to go back to those court papers? I've got reams of that mess, and turn all of that stuff in. How how would you do that? Um, I would, well, let's see, that's, uh, well, since the judgment's already been made, you, you can do it one of several ways. In this case, if you have reams of paper, then I wouldn't do an accepted for value on all of them. I would look for the one page that I would need to accept and turn into a money order, uh, one that has an amount, preferably, but if not, again, you can write in your own, um, I would also write to the company themselves and says and say, you know, I have this judgment against you. I want to uh, settle it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, please let me know what the current balance is on that debt, and it will be taken care of ASAP. And once they give that, once they send you a letter, you can do accept it for value for that, because then I'll have the name, the account number, all the pertinent information for the IRS to make sure it's taken care of. Uh, the other thing is take a look at your credit report and see if it's through them or through another collection agency and just give everybody an accepted for value. If it's the same company, then don't worry about it. But I, I would do the, um, um, the credit card company and whatever collection agency that handled it. You, I'm not sure, so sure you need to do the court as long as they've been satisfied. After they've been satisfied, or at least you think you did, you can contact the court and see what their records show. Okay. Or I, I would probably first contact the, the the credit card company again after you're sure that uh, it's been taken care of and ask them again, how much is, uh, do I owe you? Has it been taken care of? I, I'm doing my best to settle this account. What is, what is it? If it hasn't changed, do another accepted for value and send it to a different IRS office. It may be that they just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, and then, you know, after a little while, check with them again. 
once you get uh, a letter from them that says, I don't know what you're talking about or the debt has been settled, you can send that into the court and go that direction and say, this has been uh, settled, so take it off, close the account or something. Okay. Does this work with property taxes? Yes. How far can you go back on property taxes, or do you just do what you currently owe? I, I, I think if it's a debt, you can go back as far as the debts go back. So whether it's current debt or whether it's an old debt, I think the older the better, because the the further back it goes, uh, the more you you have proof it's a debt. You know, you're not purchasing something; it's a debt, and they have to take care of debts dollar for dollar. Okay. Do you still file now, or have you started filing again? Because I stopped filing in 99. That was the last year I ever filed. Do you file now? I'm starting to file again. I'm I'm trying to learn the 1099As and OID process and, uh, while doing it. But yes, I'm I'm filing again. Because I don't have to pay them, so why not? Okay, I'd have to learn how to do all that all over again because I've been so long. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Doug, how's your time working out here? Uh, we have a few more minutes, and then I should probably start getting ready. All right, we have one more, and then we'll let you go after the asthma. Okay. If I'm pronouncing it right. Hi, Doug. Thanks so much for your time. You're welcome. On this, uh, on this example here, I'm just, and I'm just trying to understand it, it makes sense to me that if the if – if because of HR 192, they're responsible for the debt, then we should actually be sending these to, you know, the government or the IRS for the resolution of this. So on the stamp, you have, um, uh, like, exemption number, and then you have deposit to the U.S. Treasury and charge the same to, you know, John A. Doe. So basically that deposit to the U.S. Treasury, that would be written on every one of them, whether it be this IRS example that I have here or a car loan, or a credit card bill, that kind of thing. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. It's simple and, enough. And all, all your accepted for values um, will say deposit to the U.S. Treasury. All of your documents should say deposit to the U.S. Treasury at least once, uh, you know, maybe twice if you got it on both sides. Um, the, the, the pay to the United States Treasury only needs to be put on there once. And um, yeah, okay. But yeah, but that that's why that is being done is because they have the duty and the obligations to pay these off dollar for dollar. Uh, if you make it payable to the company or something, they're they don't have a, a a requirement for that. Now you can make a long argument and say, well, you got your EIN number and you're subject to U.S. tax codes and all this other kind of stuff. So this one takes. Uh, precedent, and therefore you have to accept these just as much as anybody else does. But it's a lot easier um, just to have everything payable and uh, deposited to the United States Treasury so they can take care of these debts that they're supposed to take care of. So we need to give them our debts, and they'll be happy. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes total sense. If I said I was going to pay somebody else's Ford bill, they wouldn't send it to Ford and say Stan's going to pay it. You know, they'd give it to me and I would do the paying. So, exactly. That makes sense. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, that appears to be it, Doug. Okay. Which is good for you because we don't want you to be late for your engagement. Yeah. Yeah. We really still work out fine. You know, we really appreciate you spending your time with us and answering all these questions. Is there any way somewhere, either later tonight or tomorrow, me and you could get together? Because uh, I want to try to get all this posted for everybody. Um, pro probably not later on tonight because I'll be um, otherwise engaged. Uh, tomorrow, maybe late tomorrow, probably... Um, Probably around seven, eight o'clock. I'm thinking. Okay. 
because I want to get these examples out. I mean, like to say, the IRS bills was posted once. I'll repost it, and uh, that way they can see how that works out. And then the stuff from HJR was on there. I'll post that too. And that way, but we need to get one for the regular bills. I think that's the one not everybody has down yet. Yeah, I've often wondered about that too, and uh, I haven't gotten around to taking one of mine and and uh, doing stuff to it. I suppose I could do something like that. All right. All right. Well, everybody, uh, I know everybody appreciates your time, Doug, and uh, thanks for being on here with us. You're welcome. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Be looking for the postings later.